I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'll never, never, never doubt this word because it is the word of faith. So I've got ears to hear, hard to receive. So teach to me the word of God. So I believe it. I receive it right now into my life in Jesus' name. And we say amen and amen. The Bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. There is victory in overcoming the world. And where does that victory come from? Your faith. Faith is the victory to overcome the world. Someone say praise the Lord. Praise that makes it easy, right? This is the victory that overcometh the world. Well, we are designed to overcome the world. We're to be overcomers, more than conquerors, winners, victors. Jehovah Nisai, my victory banner, is planted in my life. Glory to God. So say it out loud. I win, I win. because I'm a person of faith. I walk by faith and not by sight. I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror because I got faith. Faith, faith, faith. Faith believes the word. I said faith believes the word. Hallelujah. Say that's me. We're going to do a little faith tune-up this morning. I, I like to uh, dress the mechanics of faith every six months or so. We haven't done it in a little while. And, uh, but it's very, very important because faith is your victory. Your victory is in your faith. And faith operates according to principle. It's based on spiritual law. And not too many people are aware of it. You're very aware of it because uh, we have studied this together in church. But faith is crucial to the victorious life. It's just that not a lot of Christians understand that we are to live victoriously. We're letting the world beat us up. We're letting the wind and the waves and the circumstances of life rob from us. But I want you to know it's the devil that comes to steal and kill and destroy. The Lord has come to give us a victorious life. Give us life and life abundantly. You can have victory in every area of your life. Do you see that? Do you have a, a, a faith vision of your life as victorious in every area of your life? Say, I have it. Or I'm getting it. <laughs> I'm going to have it by the end of the day. Hallelujah. Faith tune-up. Say it out loud. I'm getting a faith tune-up. My mother has a car. She's had it for like 20 years. It's a, I don't know exact number of years, a lot of years. And uh, she's 94 now. She still drives. She's still active. She's still sharp as a tack. She can beat everybody in jeopardy in this room. She is sharp, sharp, sharp. And, uh, and she is something. I'll tell you what. But she has this car that she's had for, I imagine, probably 20 years. But it has less than 50,000 miles on it. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And so she said, Jamie, I'm taking the car into the shop. I said, I said really, how did, why did, what does it need? It has less than 50,000 miles. Are they just going to put gas in it and send it back home? What are they going to do? She says, no, I just don't want, I like to drive my car, and I don't want to get stuck anywhere. And it, it's got a lot of years on it now, so I just want to make sure everything is good to go. And, and uh, so I'm going to tell them in, take it in, and I'm just going to tell them, just anything you see, fix it. Because I don't want to worry about nothing. Just, just fix it. And I said, well, that's a good approach. Go ahead and do that. And so she did. She took it in. They found all sorts of stuff that needed to be tuned up and, and moved around. And <laughs> Yeah, they found stuff. Glory to God. <laughs> and, uh, but I mean, after 20 years, you're going to find stuff. Isn't that right? And so, well, the same is true in our faith life. We got to tune it up. Because sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. There, there's, the, there's a tax that the enemy brings against us all the time that's testing our faith. And we just got to make sure that every, every cylinder is firing right and everything is going good. Amen. All the wheels are in alignment. And so I say, I'm getting a faith tune up today. Amen. 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 Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. We'll begin in verse 1. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 1, Paul, Savannah, and Timothy to the church at Thessalonians in God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly. Everybody say, your faith grows exceedingly. Say it again. Your faith grows exceedingly. And the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. Verse 4 so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith, those are the power twins, in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. So our text verse in uh, verse 3 says, Your faith, well let me begin, we are bound to thank God always for you brethren as it is fitting because so they're thanking God for them they're thanking God for what he's doing in their lives because what they're seeing and what they're hearing is their faith grows exceedingly ever increasing faith growing faith not stagnant faith not run of the mill faith Not lukewarm faith, not average faith, not coasting along faith, not so-so faith, not mediocre faith, ever-increasing faith. So the phrase is that your faith grows exceedingly. And in the original language, that exceedingly means to increase above ordinary. So there is ordinary faith, but there's also exceeding faith. There's a spectrum to faith. There's ordinary faith, and then there's exceeding faith. What, what end of the spectrum do you want to live on? <laughs> there's ordinary faith, run-of-the-mill faith, average faith, everyday faith, lukewarm faith, run-of-the-mill, so-so kind of faith. And then there is exceeding faith, growing faith, awesome faith. Come on, I need a better amen. <laughs> Say, I want to live in that ever-increasing faith life. Yeah, the Bible says there's a spectrum to faith. Jesus rebuked his own disciples in the stormy seas when they were afraid, when the winds were blowing and the boat was sinking. And he says, why do you fear, O ye of little faith? O ye of little faith. So there is such a thing as little faith. When there's great fear, there's little faith. There is a, such a thing as little faith. But then he commended the centurion soldier when he said of that soldier, I have not heard of so great a faith, no, not in all of Israel. No, he actually said it this way, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in all of Israel. So if he found it, he must have been looking for it. I want you to know that Jesus is looking for faith in us. Jesus looks for faith. Jesus judges faith. Jesus rebukes little faith. Jesus commends great faith. Faith is a big deal to the Lord. In fact, Jesus told his disciples when the Son of Man comes back to the earth, will he even find faith in the earth? So if he's looking to find it, he's looking for it. Say, I've got it. Come on, say, I've got it. Say it like you got faith behind him. Say, I'm a person of faith. The Word of God is big on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Paul, in speaking of Abraham's faith in Romans chapter 4, verse 19, he says of Abraham, Abraham was not weak in faith. So there is a weak faith. Say, not me. Abraham was not weak in faith. He considered not the circumstances of his life, and the circumstances was his own body that was now dead. He was 100 years old. Neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. She was 90 years old. And so weak faith considers the circumstances that are bigger than the promises of God, but strong faith ignores the circumstances. He was not weak in faith because he did not consider his own body. He he lived with his own body, but he didn't even consider his own body because he had a word from God, uh, and that word was bigger than the circumstance. 
That word was bigger than the situation. That word was bigger than how he felt or what he saw or what he was experienced. Even in the natural, he had a word that he was going to be the father of many nations. That the son of promise was coming. Hallelujah. Not being weak in faith, Romans 4 and 19, he considered not his own body, now dead. 100 years old. 100 years old. Neither the deadness of Sarah's womb, 90 years old. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Everybody say strong in faith. faith. Giving glory to God. Verse 21, being fully persuaded that what God had promised God was able to perform. Strong faith is fully persuaded faith. Strong faith says if God said it, he'll do it. That's what strong faith is. Strong faith, the the debate is over, the, the negotiation is over. You are fully persuaded. You cannot be talked out of it. If God said it, God's gonna do it. That settles it. I grab hold of it. Praise the Lord. That's what strong faith is. Strong faith is fully persuaded faith when you say i'm not so sure about that i just can't see it i don't know how that would work out Mm, no i don't think so that is not fully persuaded and that's not going to get you anything because a double-minded man is unstable in all his way let not that man think he's going to receive anything of the lord but strong faith strong faith says if it's in the book i believe it I receive it. It's mine. Hallelujah. Oh, brethren, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you will have it. Glory to God. Amen. So Abraham, not weak in faith, was strong in faith because he was fully persuaded. What's your point, pastor? Faith is dynamic. It can grow or it can diminish. It can wax or it can wane. It can live at one end of the spectrum, which is ordinary and mediocre, or it can be ever-increasing faith, exceedingly abundant faith. Hallelujah. That the Apostle Paul would make note of and write a letter about and say, I've heard about you guys. You guys have a testimony You guys have abundant faith that grows exceedingly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That makes me happy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are bound to thank God always for you because your faith grows exceedingly. And it was growing exceedingly in times of pressure and persecutions and tribulations verse 4 that they were enduring it was growing despite what the enemy was throwing at them their faith was growing despite what was happening their faith was growing in times of persecution their faith was growing in times of tribulation their faith was growing you know normally when the pressure comes when the pressure starts to squeeze you find Find out what's on the inside. Isn't that right? If you squeeze the, bo- the tube of toothpaste, what comes out? The, the toothpaste. When you squeeze the human, what comes out? Whatever is on the inside. Fear, anxiety, joy of the Lord, faith. Whatever is big on the inside, when the pressure comes, that's what's going to show itself on the outside. So if you build yourself up in the Word, if you build yourself up in your most holy faith, if you practice, as Pastor Debbie said, praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, when the pressure comes, what's going to come out of you is Holy Ghost intercession. What's going to come out of you is the Word of God. What's going to come out of you when you get the bad doctor's report what's going to come out of you is by his stripes I am healed when you get the bad banker's report what's going to come out of you is he prospers me in all that I put my hand to whatever the problem is there's a promise to counteract the problem just do you have it in your heart have you got it on the inside I mean big on the inside 
not just flitting through your head, but big in your heart. Glory to God. They were in times of tribulation. They were in times of persecution. And yet their faith was growing exceedingly. And that's God's plan for your life. Bible tells us in Romans that we are to, the just shall live by faith. In Galatians, the just shall live by faith. In Hebrews, the just shall live by faith. In Habakkuk, the just shall live by faith. Do you think God wants us to live by faith? I said, do you think God wants us to live by faith? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's our lifestyle. That's how we live. The just shall live by faith. So say, I'm a faith man. I'm a faith woman. I'm a faith person. <laughs> faith, faith, faith. Victory, victory, victory. Say, I win because I'm a person of faith. Hallelujah. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance. That word substance means confidence. In fact, in the New Living Translation, it says faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Hope is expectation. Faith is the confidence that what we expect is going to happen. Faith is a confidence. When you are confident that the Word of God is going to manifest in your life, you are a person of faith. Faith sees the Word of God manifest in your life because it is an evidence. You see it. You see the things. It's the evidence of things not seen. Well, they don't see it, but you see it. You see it on the inside. They, they may see you with, with the aches and the pains, but you see yourself leaping and jumping and praising God on the inside. You see it. It's the evidence of things not seen. But the evidence is so real to you. It's so tangible to you. It is an absolute truth to you because it is God's word to you and you have confidence in it. Now, why do you have confidence in it? Because you can trust the Lord. The same God who saved your soul is the God who said he would heal your body, is the God who said he would provide for your needs, is the God who said he would give you victory in every area of your life. The same God. And so when you can trust what somebody says, then you'll have confidence that they'll actually do it. If I got my car stuck in the mud, right up to the floorboards, I mean stuck, jam stuck in the mud, and I called the tow company, and I said, I am stuck in the mud up to my floorboards. I, I can't move this thing. It is stuck, stuck, stuck. Send me a tow truck. And they sent me a, a moped with a bungee cord. <laughs> I'd say, what are you doing? Well, they, they sent me out. They said, you were stuck. They sent me out here. But you're on a moped, and you got a little bungee cord. How are you, how you going to pull me out? Well, I don't know if I can pull you out or not, but I'm here to try. Well, that wouldn't work at all. So if, if I got stuck again, you know who I'm not going to call? The people with the moped and the bungee cord. I'm going to call the people with the big truck. Come on, y'all understand now. I'm going to call the people that can do what they say they can do. That they've got enough horsepower to pull me out of whatever situation I've got myself into. That if I'm stuck up to the floorboards and sinking fast, they're going to send me one of those big old semi-tractor trailer tow trucks with the big hook and the hydraulic lift and they're going to pull my car out of the muck and the mire because they got the power to do it. I can trust them because they prove themselves. I can trust my God because everything, everything, everything he has ever promised in his book it's been proven true over and over and over and over. My God is not on a moped. 
My God came by way of the cross and he shed his blood and he's proven himself to be faithful and he did everything that had to be done to save my soul and I trust him with my life. I trust him with my eternity. Hallelujah. 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 Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Now, now remember about, about Abraham, in Romans 4 and 20, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced, confidence, that what God had promised, God was able to perform. Isn't that a great revelation? He did not waver at the promise. That book in your hand is full of promises. And they're covenant promises. And they're yea and amen in Christ Jesus. And they're written in blood. And God is not going to violate his word. He's not going to back up off of his word. He's not going to tell you that it won't happen, that it can't happen, it wasn't meant for you. No, he's going to say, hey, I've got a covenant with you. It's a blood covenant with you. I have a binding legal agreement with you. And my word says by his stripes you are healed. And so by his stripes you are healed. If you've got the faith to believe it and receive it it's yours it's yours saith the Lord didn't waver at the promise say I'm not a waverer I'm a receiver I believe and receive hallelujah hallelujah someone say hallelujah you know the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please him isn't that a tremendous thing? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For those who come to him must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Everything that God created, he created by speaking it. First he imagined it, he saw it, then he spoke it. Let there be and there was, and it was good. God's still speaking. He's speaking into our lives. Uh, let there be salvation. Let there be healing. Let there be prosperity. Let there be joy. Let there be peace. Let there be, let there be, and there was, and it is good. He's seeking to do us good all day long. Don't waver at the promise. Believe and receive the promise of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's talk about the building blocks of our faith. If we are to live an ever-increasing faith life, how do we do that? The principles of faith are not difficult to understand. The principles of faith operate according to a very, very simple structure. It, it's all laid out in Scripture. We receive faith. We grow faith. We release faith. We demonstrate faith. That's it. It is that simple. We receive faith. We grow faith. We release our faith. And we demonstrate our faith. Now, we receive faith by hearing. Sure we do. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Look with me in Romans 10 and 17. How do you get faith? Well, you hear the word. You hear the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. This is why it's so important that you have gone through everything that you've gone through this morning to get here to hear the word. Uh, you've paid a price already this morning. You got up, you made the coffee, you got yourself ready, you got the kids ready, you got everybody in the car, somebody made breakfast, maybe, maybe, or a protein bar or something on the way. You drove across town. Town, you drove across a couple of towns, you made it to church, you got in here, you found a seat. Aren't you glad that the man of God is actually preaching the word of God that makes all of your effort worthwhile? <laughs> Hallelujah! Aren't you glad we're not just singing a song and, and reciting a poem and kumbaya and going home? <laughs> no, man. 
we're a word church. We're a faith church. We want you built up in faith. We want you victorious in living. Hallelujah. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Oh, you're going to hear a lot of things, and a lot of it is faithless and fearful and anxiety-driven and strife-riddled. But faith comes from the word of God. Say, so I need more word. Don't we? We all need more word. 1 Peter 2 and 2, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. When you hear the word, you grow. When you hear the word, you grow. But it's not just hearing, it's hearing and accepting, hearing and believing. It's not just hearing. If it was just hearing the word, uh, then everybody would be saved and full of the Holy Ghost and living victoriously because a lot of people have heard the word, but they rejected the word. They didn't receive the word. You know, the word, the seed of God's word, we're told from the parable of the sower, the seed of God's word falls on multiple soils. Some of it is rocky, some of it is wayward, some of it is thorny, but thank God some of it's good. Good soil. Pat yourself on the heart right now. Good soil right here. Yeah, man, I'm ready for the, I, ready for the seed. Get me more seed. I need more seed of God's word. Hallelujah. But, but Jesus gave us a great insight. Look in Mark 4 and 20. But these are the ones that are sown on good ground. Those who hear the word and accept it. Hear it and believe it. A lot of people hear the word of God and say, no, I just can't believe that. I don't believe it. I just don't receive that. I don't accept it. They'll hear it, but they won't accept it. There's so many good promises of God, uh, but not everybody accepts it. Not everybody accepts the idea that God wants you healed. Not everybody accepts the idea that God wants you prosperous. Not everybody accepts the idea that God wants you victorious. Not everybody accepts the idea that God wants you happy. Not everybody accepts the idea, come on, that God wants you full of the Holy Ghost. That God wants you speaking in tongues. That God wants, not everybody accepts those ideas, those biblical promises. Not everybody accepts it. They'll accept that I'm, I, I'm born again and I got a cabin in glory. That's what they accept and that's about as far as it goes. But God said that he wanted us to have life and life abundantly here in this life. But you have to believe it and receive it. You have to accept it. you got to hear it and accept it. I'm still in Mark 4 and 20. But this is the, the seed that was sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept the word, will bear fruit. 30-fold, 60-fold, some 100-fold. So when you hear the word and you accept the word, that's when the word starts having a positive effect on your life. According to your measure of faith. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Praise the Lord. Someone say amen. amen. So faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So when you open the Word, read the Word, hear yourself, absorbing the Word, accepting the Word, that's when your faith starts growing, starts growing, starts growing. I am a wonderful example of this process because I was a church kid, grew up in church, in church every time the doors were open, I was involved in every church activity you could ever possibly involved in, be involved in, and I'm very, very thankful for that. It, it had a tremendous impact on my life. I, that's where I learned to love the Lord, learned to love the church experience, and, and learned to love the Word of God, but I didn't know any of the Word of God because the Word of God and the promises of God were not emphasized in the particular church that I grew up in. Yes, morality was, and having a moral compass, and doing good and not evil, all of that, golden rule, all of that, yes, yes, yes. But the promises of God, the spiritual laws of God, the mechanics of faith, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, these things were foreign to me. I did not know these things until I was in my 20s. And I was a church kid. And I didn't know them until I was in my 20s. So I heard what I heard, but it only went so far. When you hear the word, accept the word. Amen. Say, that's my word. 
I believe that word. I'm going to run with that word. I'm going to live by faith, glory to God. That's my word. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's how we receive faith, hearing the word. Now, when you receive faith, you've got to grow your faith. And what, is it, what does it say? The seed is sown into the heart, good soil. So now you've got to grow it. The seed is there, but you've got to grow it. It's got to increase in your life. And so faith then, the seed, has to grow in your heart until out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you've got to grow. Well, how do you grow faith? How do you grow that seed of that word so that it becomes big faith in your life? You do it by reflecting on it, meditating on it. Uh, the word meditation in Scripture means to reflect on it. Actually, it means to regurgitate it over and over and over again. It's like a cow eating its cud. You, you just you get it on the inside, you bring it up, think about it, get it back down on the inside, bring it. Is that gross? Yeah, that was gross. Sorry, sorry. Edit that out, edit it out. <laughs> but that is what the original language says. <laughs> Trying to help everybody out today. <laughs> Apparently I'm not. <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> faith, faith, faith. Hallelujah. See, now I'm going to have to go back to the beginning and start over again. I lost my, lost my place. Growing faith. That's where we're at. Glory to God. Joshua. One and eight. This book of the law. Now, he didn't have the New Testament at that time. He had all the word that he had. The first five books of the Old Testament. So this is what he had. This book of the law will not depart from my mouth. So he's going to be talking the word, talking the word, talking the word. This book of the law will not depart from my mouth, but I will meditate on it both day and night that I may observe to do according to all that is written therein that I may observe to do. If I meditate on it, I'm going to find myself doing it, and then I will make my way prosperous, and I'll have good success. So Joshua 1.8 is a very, very powerful verse. It is a revelation verse that if you meditate on the Word of God, you will find in that you will uh, begin observing to do the Word of God, and then He will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Victory, victory, victory. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're growing the Word on the inside. You're meditating on the Word. Proverbs 4 and 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for their life to those who find them, health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. So if you're meditating on the word, life is going to spring up out of you. The issues of life, life is going to spring up out of you. Psalms 1 and 1, blessed is the man, walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, stands in the path of sinners, in the seat of scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Say, that's me. He's like a tree planted by rivers of living water that brings forth his fruit in due season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. When you grow the word, expect your life to prosper. When the word gets big in your heart and you start speaking the word, your life is going to prosper. And that brings us to, a, to the third point. When you speak the word, you're releasing your faith. You have received it by hearing it. You have grown it by meditating on it. And now you're going to release it. You're going to prophesy it in your life. You're going to declare the word. You shall declare a thing, and it shall be established unto you. So I received it by hearing it. I grew it by meditating on it. Out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth speaks. What am I speaking? The word. The word, I'm not speaking the problem. I'm not speaking the situation. I'm not speaking the, listen, the, the, the disciples in the boat, all they could talk about was the wind and the waves. Yeah. And Jesus said, don't talk about them, talk to them. Be, peace, be still. When your heart is full of the word, then you are speaking the word, you're prophesying the word, and you're commanding the oceans, peace be still. 
body be healed. Life be prosperous. Joy of the Lord is my strength. And so on and so forth. Glory to God. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Hallelujah. So you release the word by speaking the word. Speak the word. God said, let there be, and there was, and it was good. Jesus said, I want you to do everything exactly the same way as Father God does it. Have the faith of God. This is what he said in Mark 11. Have faith. The faith of God. Let's put that up there for a second. Mark 11. Let's just skip to 23. Mark 11 and 23. In 22, he says, have the faith of God. Well, what is the faith of God? He says, well, assuredly, I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, say unto this mountain, say unto this mountain, let there be, and there was, say unto this mountain. This is the faith of God. This is how faith works. This is how you release faith in your life. You have to talk to the mountain. Whoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea. Whoever says to the sickness and the disease, Be thou removed and cast into the sea. Speaks to the affliction, Be thou removed and cast into the sea. Speaks to lack and limit and loss, Be thou removed and cast into the sea. You understand? Come on, church, you understand. You, you got to speak to the mountain. Don't let that mountain speak to you. You start talking to that mountain. Whoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believeth those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Believeth those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. How do you release faith? You talk. You talk to it. We are speaking spirits. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we speak. We are speaking spirits. How often do we find ourselves talking and speaking about the problem? Because we see it, then we say it. Rather than we hear the word, we grow the word, we speak the word, rather than speaking the circumstance and speaking the problem. Can I just be real today? Isn't that usually what we do? We, we feel the pain, we feel the circumstance, we see the wind and the wave, and that's what we want to talk about. What a day I've had. Those winds were big. Those waves were big. Winds were hard. Mercy, what a day, what a day. Rather than, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will, come on, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Point number four, and I'll close on this. So we hear the word, that's how you get your faith. We grow the word, or we meditate on the word, that's how you, you grow your faith. Then we release the word by speaking, that's how you release your faith. But then you have to confirm your faith, and you have to demonstrate your faith. Come on, church. James chapter 2, verse 17. I'll read the New Living Translation. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Now, we're saved by faith. Everybody say, we're saved by faith. Yeah, we know that from Ephesians 2 and 8. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So faith is a gift. It's not of works. You did not earn your faith. Jesus earned your faith on the cross. He did all the works necessary to earn your faith. We're saved by grace. Unmerited favor through faith. Jesus did all the works. But now that you're saved, now that you're saved, you got to demonstrate that, that faith. You got to show some good fruit on that tree. Faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it's dead and useless. Now, some may argue some people have faith, others have good deeds, but I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I'll show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith for you believe that there is one God good for you. Even demons believe this and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Amen. Hallelujah. And that's a good place to conclude right there. Glory to God. Faith tune up. We are creatures of faith. We are speaking spirits. We are people of faith. 
And that means that we are not ruled by our circumstance. We rule our circumstance. That means we have spiritual authority in our life. That means we don't have to settle for the way things are. We can command things to be different. We can take authority over them. Why? This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Did you get anything out of this today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah.